Okay, so in this video, we're going to be looking at quadratics where there's a number in front of the x squared. In other words, the coefficient is not equal to 1. So we're just going to dive straight in with these, okay? I'm going to try and write them in this particular form, a brackets a x, sorry, a brackets x plus b squared plus c. So the trick for these questions is, first of all, just to factorize the first two terms. Factorize the first two terms. And that's going to help us to do the completing the square part. So what I mean by this is let's just change it into a normal completing the square. Just focusing on these parts that we have, I'm going to factorize out the 2 so that I have x squared plus 6x. And then at the end, I'm just going to leave the plus 7. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to complete the square on just this part that I've done in black. So completing the square on that part, and I'm going to do this in black, it is going to be an x plus 3 squared minus 9. And I'm going to close that bracket and do the plus 7. Now that I've completed the square on the factorized part that I have here, I can expand the brackets really carefully and then just simplify the whole thing. So when I expand these brackets, it's going to be 2 multiplied by x plus 3 squared, which is just going to be 2 brackets x plus 3 squared. I'm going to have the 2 times the minus 9, which is minus 18. And then because we never factorize this plus 7, it's not needed to be multiplied or divided by 2 at any point. So I just have that plus 7, which leaves it as 2 brackets, x plus 3 squared minus 18 plus 7 is just minus 11 that we've got there like that. So we've written it in that completed square form that we have here. So I'm going to do the same thing for this one. We're going to just start off by factorizing the first two terms. You can factorize all of the terms, but I just think it makes sense just to factorize the ones that are to do with x. So I'm going to take out a factor of 3 this time. That means you're dividing these things by 3. So you're going to have an x squared. And this doesn't factorize very nicely by 3. But because taking a factor of 3 out means dividing by 3, I'm going to divide this by 3. And I'm going to just write it in fraction form. Remember what I said before, fractional form is definitely going to be the preference in these kinds of questions. And of course, there's still that plus one that's at the end there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to complete the square on this part that I've just underlined in black. So when I complete the square on this part, I'm going to still have that three that's outside the front. And I'm going to do this part in black here. So I'm going to half that minus four over three. That's going to become half of minus four over three is minus two over three. And then I'm going to subtract that being squared. So the 2 becomes a 4 and the 3 squared is the 9. I'll close that bracket off and don't forget the plus 1 that we've got there. So expanding these brackets, I'm going to have 3 brackets, x minus 2 over 3 squared. I've now got to multiply the 3 times the minus 4 over 9. So if you want to, you could do that somewhere else on your page. I'm going to do 3 multiplied by 4 over 9. You could just say that that's 12 over 9 and then simplify that to 4 over 3. Or you could also at the beginning part of this, when you're doing 3 times 4 over 9, you could see that the numerator and denominator can be divided by 3. I could divide by 3 here and I could divide by 3 here, and we go straight to that answer of 4 over 3. So when I multiply the 3 times the minus 4 over 9, I get minus 4 over 3. And of course, you've still got that plus 1 there. Remember, plus 1 is just the same thing as saying 3 over 3. So when I simplify this expression that we have, we are going to get 3 brackets, x minus 2 over 3 squared, minus 4 over 3 plus 3 over 3 is just going to be minus 1 over 3. So that's the answer that we have for question 2. Now question 3 is a little bit different because the coefficient that we have of the x squared term is actually, it says over 10. Now this can be written in two different ways. You could either write it as x squared over 10 or you could write it as a tenth x squared. Those are completely equivalent to each other. So when we factorize this here, we're actually going to be taking out a factor of a tenth. And I only need to factorize these two terms because there is only two terms. I don't need this extra term that's going to hang out at the end. So when I factorize by the tenth, I'll get the x squared. And then you just need to think carefully. Here, when we took the 3 out, it was dividing the parts here by 3. If you take a tenth out, you're dividing by a tenth. And dividing by a tenth is the same thing as multiplying by 10. So rather than saying, divide, rather than writing 3 over 10, that's dividing it by 10, I actually need to multiply it by 10. So it's going to be minus 30x. Now I would just double check to expand and see if this works. You get the tenth x squared, and a tenth of 30 is indeed the 3. So that does work when we do that expanding. 
this part now just requires the completed square happening to it. So there's going to be the tenth. The part that I'm going to do in black here, that's going to be x minus half of the 30 is 15. And 15 squared, you can either check it on a calculator, but it's 225. So all that's left is to expand these brackets. So we have a tenth brackets x minus 15 squared, and then we have minus 225 over 10. And the top and bottom can be divided by 5. In fact, I'm going to simplify that. 225 over 10. I'm going to be very lazy and use the calculator. I'm just going to write it as 45 over 2. I guess you could put it as a decimal if you wanted to, but the theme of it is all in fractions. So that's minus 15 squared and minus 45 over 2. You could do it as a decimal if you wanted to. Okay, so although this one is technically kind of looks like it's in the normal form without the a, there is a minus at the beginning, and you can factorize out, factorize out minus numbers. You can factorize out either a negative or negative 1 for this. So I'm actually going to just take out a factor of a negative, okay? If I take out a factor of a negative, it's actually just going to flip the signs of these things that we have here. So there would be an x squared, just doing it to these two parts here, we're going to leave the minus 7. There's going to be an x squared and a minus 4x, and there is still a minus 7. If, you, if it helps you, you can actually see that you've taken out a negative 1 there. But you don't need to have that 1 there. Let's check it works. You get minus x squared, and minus times by minus 4x does give you the plus 4x that you have. So now I'm going to do the completing the square on this part, which I've underlined in black. So you're going to have minus, open up the brackets, let's complete the square, x minus 2 squared, and then don't forget you have to subtract the 4. Let's close that bracket and still have the minus 7. So when you expand, there is a minus 1 here, I'm just going to say that it's just a negative. So you get minus x minus 2 squared. You get the minus times by the minus 4, which becomes a plus 4, and the minus 7, which was there from before. So you get minus x minus 2 squared minus 3 in this completed square form that you have here. So they're pretty tricky. You've got to be good at algebra to be able to do these questions. But I um, highly recommend just factorising the first two terms and even doing them in a different colour to just to do those parts there as a completed square form. So you've got five questions, uh, four questions to do here. I am going to do them really quickly, so you can pause the video and then see if you get the same answer as me. But I'm going to go through them a little bit quicker than I did the other ones. Okay, so to start off with, I'm just going to factorise out the 2 from the beginning. So I'm going to get the x squared plus the 4x, and I'm still going to have the minus 5. I'll complete the square on this part on the next line. So that's going to be two brackets, x plus 2 squared minus 4. And then I've got the minus 5. Expanding those brackets, that's 2 brackets x plus 2 squared, minus 8, and the minus 5. So it's 2 brackets x plus 2 squared, minus 13. Hopefully you got that one right. So I'm going to factorise the first two terms, like I did here, by 5. It's going to be x squared minus 3 over 5x. Remember, factorising by 5 means dividing by 5. And then I've got the plus 2. So I'm going to complete the square on that part, which I've underlined in black. It's going to be 5 brackets x. Now I have to do half of 3 fifths. That's 3 fifths multiplied by a half. That's actually going to be 3 tenths squared minus 9 over 100. Close the brackets and there's the plus 2. So this is going to be 5 brackets x minus 3 tenths squared. And then I'm going to be doing 9 over 100 multiplied by 5. Now you can jot this down somewhere else. 9 over 100 multiplied by 5. Well, I can divide this and this by 5. So it's actually just going to be 9 over 20. If that's too fast for you, I would recommend just either doing this a little bit slower and simplifying the fraction or doing it on your calculator. So the 9 over 100 times by 5 is 9 over 20, so that's minus 9 over 20. And then we've got the plus 2. So plus 2 is actually going to be 40 over 20. So it's 5 brackets, x minus 3 over 10 squared, minus 9 over 20 plus 40 over 20 is 31 over 20. Okay, so I'm going to factorise out the fifth here. 
Obviously, there could be an extra number. Just in both of those ones I've done, there hasn't been. So when I factorize out a fifth, I'm actually multiplying by five. So it's going to be a minus 10x that you have here. A ten, 10 times a fifth is indeed the two. So I'm going to just complete the square on this part that we've got. That's a fifth brackets x minus 5 squared minus 25. And then I'm going to expand that to get a fifth brackets x minus 5 squared and a fifth of 25 or a fifth multiplied by 25 is just going to be 5. So it's lots of fives in this question, loads and loads of fives. Last one, I'll factorize out that negative from those first two terms. So that's going to be x squared minus 6x and I'm still going to keep that negative 4 there. And then I'm just going to complete the square on that part that I've underlined in black. So it's going to be minus brackets x minus 3 squared minus 9 and then there's still the minus 4. Expanding that, you get the minus with the x minus 3 squared. The minus and the minus 9 becomes a plus 9, and you get the minus 4. So you get minus brackets x minus 3 squared plus 5. Now, I probably would write this as 5 brackets x minus 3 squared. I'd probably start it with this positive term and then have the negative term so it looks like this. Now the reason I didn't do that on this question is because they were both negative so I was happy just to write it in that particular form there. Okay I'm going to show you something in the next video that is not in the GCSE but it's just good if you want to start exploring a bit more with algebra and this is when the a term at the beginning is a square number. Found this video helpful then why not drop it a like and consider subscribing to my channel. If you'd like the next video in the playlist, you can click here to be taken straight to it. And as always, wishing you the very best for all your studies.